All right, the Jane City Commission meeting has now come to order. Oh, water. Can you please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. This morning, the invocation will be given by Commissioner Williams. Thank you. Would you please bow your heads? Dear Lord, this morning we'd like to just thank you in advance for your love and all that you do for us. Please continue to bless us with humility and allow us to be servants to the community. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Good morning, Ms. Lavender. May we have the roll call? Good morning, Mayor Whaley. Aye. Commissioners Williams. Aye. Joseph. Aye. Mims. Aye. Shaw. Aye. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the September 6, 2017 meeting? So moved. Second. Should properly move and seconded to approve the minutes of the September 6, 2016 meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ms. Lavender, are there any communications or petitions? There are none, Your Honor. All right, well, we have a few presentations this morning, Commissioner. First, uh, I would like to invite Mr. John Rogers, coordinator of Dayton Public Schools Office of Males of Color, to give us uh, some information on their upcoming Males of Color Action Summit. Good morning, Mr. Rogers. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. Get set up here real quick. Okay. Um, so on, well, first off, let me say good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I want to thank uh, the city for all of the support you've provided over this past year, uh, especially Commissioner Mims here, who's we've been meeting every Tuesday for the last year, uh, and this is some of the one of the culminating ideas that we came up with in order to uh, generate some activity. Uh, and create uh, an umbrella of all of the uh, different organizations in the city that uh, are there to provide services and help for the young men that we serve. So I just wanted to just really give you a brief overview. We have a uh, Office for Males of Color Community Action Summit planned for Tuesday, uh, September the 19th. Uh, it'll be at Sinclair Community College. Uh, it is a collaboration between the city of Dayton, Dayton Public Schools, uh, Wright State University, Boonshaw School of Medicine, and Sinclair uh, Community College. So we're collectively working together to bring this summit, uh, which will include different presentations from uh, different uh, experts from around the country. We'll be evaluating best practices. Uh, we'll talk about uh, uh, some of the uh, various topics that we deal with, like uh, knowledge of self, uh, understanding African-American males, understanding males of color. Uh, Dayton Public Schools, it, at Dayton Public Schools, that is the largest demographic, the largest subgroup that we have, but we also serve uh, urban Appalachian, we also serve Latino, we also serve uh, Native American uh, students. So this year, this is our opening event to pull the community uh, together and also to make sure that we have a successful uh, men of color go back to school event that is planned for the 28th of September. Uh, so a part of that will include training uh, for the mentors, the over 100 mentors that we're going to have uh, come from the different uh, organizations around the city, different fraternities, soror uh, different fraternities, I'm sorry, uh, and other organizations that serve our young men. Uh, and they'll also, there's also <coughs> going to be Commissioner Mims. We've got, uh, who else do we have on our schedule? Uh, the Superintendent Corps, uh, Dr. Walker, uh, Dr. Stephen Niffley, who's actually doing a session on uh, uh, knowledge of self, understanding the mind of the black male, and that is also the title of, uh, of one of his latest books. Uh, we're going to talk about challenging narratives. I'm doing that session. Uh, higher learning and supporting the transition of African American males into higher education. That's going to be done uh, by uh, Sinclair Community College. Also, we're going to have the emotional mass emancipation circles and uh, social emotional uh, development organizations present on some of the other activities that we have going on in the schools. Uh, there's a fatherhood breakout session. Uh, we're talking with law enforcement. Uh, so we've got a, a large cast. And we're also bringing in city leaders to participate on a panel where we're going to uh, discuss some of the prevailing issues that, that affect our students day to day. I could Great, Mr. Rogers. Commissioners, any comments? Uh, I'd just like to add uh, with uh, Dr. Rogers' comments that um, the other support is from uh, Austin Riley, our aides, and uh, Michael Wilson. Again, it's helped us tremendously as we work to right. put this together. And as Dr. Rogers indicated, that it will be uh, also sort of a kickoff for our fourth annual Men of Color event, 
uh, on the 28th of uh, September in Dayton Public Schools. They had requested that we try to do these things a little earlier this year mm -hmm. uh, because it sets a, a good tone for the rest of the year as opposed to uh, November that we've done like in the last couple of years. Right. So this right. is something that's very beneficial and we've had a lot of cooperation from members of the community to make this happen. I think additionally, <clears throat> wanted to say that we also met with, uh, met with all the fraternity presidents a couple of weeks ago, along with um, uh, Mr. Rogers, Dr. Rogers' uh, supervisor, Dr. <coughs> excuse me, Dr. Kelly. Dr. Kelly. And we talked about some of the issues that we were dealing with in the past of maintaining that thrust of these fraternities who have adopted these high schools and their continued work in the high schools and the uh, intending goal of training high school young men to assist us as we go down to the elementary schools and work with those young men in the elementary schools. So it's a good model, it's a good project, it's one of the models that they use across the nation to make sure we continue to galvanize and accelerate uh, student achievement, especially among uh, the group that we're, that, uh, we're working with this very challenge. So again, we appreciate all the support that we've gotten from the commission and the community as a whole. And I wanted to mention too, we're also, in, you know, we're not in just inviting uh, leaders, but it's uh, parents, uh, we're going to bring groups of students uh, from the various schools that we serve to actually participate for a portion of the day as well. Uh, so it's, uh, like I say, it's uh, going to be our mentors and also people from the community will have access to come out and also uh, participate and, and get some of, uh, get a better idea, I guess, of what we are planning to do this year and, and further on. Now, now, what's the cost for this event? There is no cost. It is free. It okay. is free to the Just, public. I, I wanted to hear that magic yes. word. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Yeah, it is free. And like I say, we, uh, you know, break, we're continental breakfast, lunch. Uh, we're going to spend the day uh, having a good time and uh, learning about all of the factors that, that are affect our young men. Okay. If I could, I just wanted to just say um, thank you very much for coming. Congratulations um, to both you, Mr. Rogers, and I want to say congratulations to Commissioner Mims, because Commissioner Mims has been working on um, this effort for some time and it's nice to see how it's grown and um, every year it takes on additional structure and just we can just see the progress that's being made here so I just want to make sure that we give um, Commissioner Mims and you mm -hmm. Mr. Rogers a lot of credit Thanks. for continuing this and, and furthermore I'm really happy to see this is it's very important for us to wherever possible to collaborate with the school system so um, really appreciate the collaboration between you two um, and again helping mm -hmm. the, the whole city move forward through collaboration mm -hmm. between the city and the schools is important, so thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yeah, I also want to mention, too, that um, we have in the audience um, the CEO of the United Way, uh, Mr. He'll Tom Malsby. Oh. Okay, but he also yeah. helps tremendously as far as these efforts are concerned as well. And I wanted to make sure that people knew he was one of the early collaborators mm -hmm. and members of the steering committee. Yeah. And if we haven't collaborated, I'll be reaching out to other people this year. So uh, certainly <coughs> that's, that's going to be a big part of it, too, because Dayton is known for being a, a helping city that has a lot of different resources. The thing is we wanna, we're gonna pull those together so we can uh, direct our students a lot, quick, a lot more quickly to those resources that they need. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Rogers, right. good to see you this morning. Thank you, thank you. Next, I'd like to invite Ms. Meg Shoemaker-Little from Welcoming America. Um, I think uh, we're being recognized this morning as a certified welcoming city after our thorough audit. Aud audit, excuse me. Uh, welcome, Meg, and good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Yes, on behalf of Welcoming America, I am excited to announce that Dayton has achieved the status of Certified Welcoming and is the first city to earn this merit. Right. The Certified Welcoming designation is reserved for communities that have proven they meet the highest bar of immigrant inclusion through a rigorous certification process that engaged and evaluated partners and agencies across the city, it is clear Dayton exceeds this standard. Dayton has long served as a beacon to other communities. Its strong agenda of inclusive policies and programs and vision for how a community can unite at a time of deep division makes this city a role model for others. Many communities want to distinguish themselves as inclusive places because of the climate and because we know that cities benefit economically and culturally. Dayton's commitment to con inclusion is helping to reverse population, uh, population decline, 
Um, and foreign-born households in Dayton contributed more than 15 million in state and local taxes from 2009 to 2013. Nationally, immigrant-owned businesses employ nearly 6 million workers, and openness is a primary factor for why individuals and businesses put down roots and contribute to a place. As more communities step up to the plate, Dayton will continue to be a role model and lead by example of movement toward more inclusive communities. We look forward to many more following in its lead and to a time in this country when everyone, including immigrants, can fully participate and belong in their communities. We congratulate the City of Dayton and the Commission on achieving the designation of Certified Welcoming and especially congratulate Welcome Dayton and the Welcome Dayton Committee on its leadership locally, regionally, and nationally. And I have a formal certificate as oh, well. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> uh, well, I think we have a, a couple of comments. I think Commissioner sure. Joseph, who's been our lead on Welcoming Dayton, should go down and uh, accept the certificate on our behalf. What do you think, Commissioner? Exactly. Yes. exactly. We're going to bring it up. I want to see it, though. Yep. You have to share it with yeah, everybody. Bring it up so we can, so we can <laughs> see it. <coughs> Okay, now look over there so uh -oh. they can take a picture. <laughs> Let me set this up. All right. <laughs> All right, now look at the cameras. <laughs> now breathe. All right. Yeah. All right, congratulations. Yeah. Welcome, Dayton. Yeah. I know Commissioner Joseph and others will want to have a couple of comments. Meg, we're certainly happy you're here. I know I see some of the Welcome Dayton Committee throughout the um, uh, chambers this morning. Appreciate you all coming up early this morning uh, to be here to celebrate this. We're very proud of what we do with being an immigrant friendly community, but we're even more proud that we're a national leader in this effort and being the first city that's certified I think proves that. Uh, and we appreciate your leadership nationally to bring communities together that believe that inclusivity and diversity is the way to growth and prosperity. So appreciate uh, your great leadership too. Commissioners. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a long process to audit. Uh, you all did a lot of hard work. Uh, you analyzed what's happening here. You talked to a lot of different people. Uh, you looked at our programs and how they're working. Um, and we're very glad to be certified like this. Uh, I'm, I'm very proud of, of the organizations that make up Welcome Dayton, the great individuals, many of whom are here in the audience. Uh, I also need probably to thank uh, Tom Rawrab and Melissa Bertola, who have guided the organization and our policy for the last nearly six years now. So it couldn't happen without them. Um, but just like we've said from the very beginning, a welcoming city is all the organizations and all the people in it. The city organization itself, we can lead, we can convene, but it really comes down to all the people who are doing the work on the ground to make the city a more welcoming place. Um, I want to say that I'm, I'm very proud that this commission has taken as a consistent goal and maybe even as a theme uh, trying to do our best to make sure that our citizens are able to use their abilities for themselves and for their community. Um, from Commissioner Mims' hard work on the program we just spoke of uh, to Welcome Dayton and in many other areas, I'm, I'm very proud that, that my colleagues and I um, have taken this as, as a theme, whether consciously at the beginning or not. <laughs> I think we all agree that that's a very important goal um, and we're working towards it. And I'm proud to, to have my colleagues' support on this for these many years. I'm proud of their, uh, their boldness and their foresight, uh, and I want to thank you, Mayor and Commissioners, my colleagues, for all your work and, and your, your boldness on this. Well, thank you, uh, Commissioner, for all of your hard work, uh, you know, in this national environment, uh, you know, that we are, are taking leadership in this welcoming space. I think it's just very important to, to be bold and step out there. Uh, it's so important for our citizens, but we also just heard the kind of benefits that we get uh, from, from uh, these uh, immigrants that come to our town. So. Thank you for your hard work, and thank you for, for acknowledging mm -hmm. this. And I don't want to be redundant, but I do have to just say I just want to com commemorate, I mean, I'm sorry, com commend, yeah. commend Commissioner uh, Joseph. You know, you were a lead early on here, and um, you, should, you should get lots of credit for what we're seeing here. It's assuming this is the year we're getting recognized, I mean, from being an all-American right. city to now being a welcoming city. Um, it's just nice to see that things that were started years ago that we've been working on, uh, we're getting some national and some good attention and acclaim. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, just uh, want to add to that. Don't want to be redundant, but uh, echo everything else that's been said. And also add that, uh, Mr. Joseph, is that a new tie that you wore just for this occasion? 
<laughs> it is. Thank you, Good Commissioner. Good I, I noticed that. You know, it's my goal to be as, <laughs> look, just even a, a portion as stylish as you. So I, I feel like well, I'm 25, 30% of the way there. Mims no. would notice if someone had a new All right, thank you. Again, thank you, thank Meg, you and welcome. Here. And thank you to welcome Dayton. Thank you for your great leadership. Congratulations mm -hmm. this morning. Next, I'd like to invite Ms. Hadis Barar, which I always mess up her name, <laughs> sorry. Our region's trade represented to Israel to update us on the latest Israel business activities. Welcome back. It's good to see you. I'm yeah. glad you're here this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. There we go. All right, so DRITA is the Dayton Region Israel Trade Alliance that was established a few years back by the city, by Montgomery County, and the Dayton Development Coalition. And the mission was to identify business opportunities. Can you hear me well? Yeah, you're great. OK, and promote collaboration between Dayton companies and Israeli companies. And the goal is really to foster and grow the businesses here by leveraging the connection to Israel. And I was hired a few years back, and I am 100% Israeli, I'm, and I work and I live in Israel, and specifically in Tel Aviv. So why Israel out of all places, right? So the last 20, 30 years, most of the technology that we have been using in our daily life came actually from Israeli companies. From the world's largest community-based traffic and navigation app, which is Waze, and I don't know. Uh, I use Waze, it's great. There you go. So just a personal story. I was going from my house to the, to the Kinneret, which is our only water reservoir. It's like a two hours drive. Went into my car, opened Waze, and it showed me four hours, and I go, who needs this app, right? Went into my car, went to the highway, and got stuck there for four hours. Right. So it really gives you in real time what the traffic is and what's the best route to go. And Google also valued this invention and bought that for, one, for more than $1 billion. Kinect gesture recognition, also an Israeli invention bought by Microsoft and then Apple. Autonomous cars and world's most advanced vision-based collision avoidance is also an Israeli invention uh, brought to the world by Mobile Isle and was just bought by Intel for $15 billion. And that's already available. This smart eye on the road that uh, avoids accidents is already available in many, many cars in the world today. Healthcare inventions as well. Argo, for instance, invented this robotic skeleton that allows a, a people just get out of the wheelchair and walk. And this woman up there, she did a marathon in London. She did 40 kilometers walking. Given imaging, years ago, when it was still science fiction, invented a camera in the size of a pill, which you swallow. It goes down into your small intestine. That organ is something that the doctors could, couldn't have seen up until then. So that was a huge invention. So is the ischemic heart disease tent and some new therapies that has to do with cancer, and specifically Kite Pharma, which was just bought for $12 billion. And that company uses our immune cells to treat cancer and fight it. And even if it comes back, back fight it even more. And hopefully would make chemotherapy something we will never have to use again. So lots of multinational companies understand the value of working with Israel and opened R&D centers. There are more than 300 of those in Israel. 80% of them are American companies. But there are so many opportunities for small companies and medium-sized companies. And in the Dayton regions, those companies can really tap into Israeli innovation <coughs> and help bring to market to their own customers better and improved pro project and products at lower costs. Because usually Israelis tend to do more with less. And also think about Israel as new markets to conquer as, an, as a gateway to Europe and Asia because Israeli works with lots of companies in that area as well. And certainly when it comes to medical, provide better care at reduced cost. So, over the years, DRITA identified dozens of collaboration opportunities and facilitated hundreds of introductions between Israeli and Dayton companies. Basically, we work in all sectors, very, very diverse. And we work from tiny startups, and I'm going to mention a few, to just giant companies. And some of the collaboration are just in the initial phase. Some of them results are already showing. 
All in all, we had in the last few years more than 110 business agreements and documents that were signed between Israeli and Dayton region companies. And that can, can vary from NDAs to joint ventures to many kinds of purchase agreements and MOUs, and even in unique requests for proposals that the Dayton companies have now received that they wouldn't have otherwise because these are not publicly knowledge. What's the time so, frame again? How many years is that? Over, over, over what period yes, of time? Yes, since uh, I started working <coughs> for, for Dayton, it, and that was beginning of 2014. Okay. So this all kind of happened when you started working? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of, a lot of good <laughs> things happened before that. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Here are a few examples. Uh, Sinclair Community <laughs> College. So that started in 2008 or 9 when Deb Norris came to Israel and she saw all that, what, that was going on in the UAS field in Israel and she had this vision to create a national center for UAS training and certificate for the benefit of Sinclair students and employment here in the city. Um, and she, she created that <coughs> center and we connected, Drita connected them with Simlat, which is a UAS a training company, very advanced, and they embedded their technology in, in Sinclair Simulation Center. Later, they took this ambulance and converted it to a mobile ground control station and again embedded Simlat technology into it. So this started as a vendor relationship, and now Sinclair and Simlat are true partners. They even won together $1 million grant from a federal Israeli foundation, the Bird Foundation, also facilitated by Drita. And they're working with various other companies in Israel. They've been to Israel a few times. I organized their itinerary and introduced them to Cholon Institute of Technology, and they signed an MOU. So that was the first international agreement for Sinclair with a college outside of the US. And that is so, uh, so exciting because Cholon and Dayton are sister cities. Right. Next, um, I want to present Commuter Ed. So that, that is a startup in Dayton, and they visited Israel in September 2016. In fact, we had 34 missions and visits of companies coming to Dayton, or Dayton companies coming to Israel, and some of the companies that met elsewhere in the United States growing their business together. So Commuter Ed came in September 2016, um, I organized on behalf of Drit 12 meetings, be, meetings for them. They had this huge wish list. They wanted to meet bus companies and large uh, out-of-home media companies, also developer companies, and even the Ministry of Transport. Um, and just after a month or two, they nailed two deals. So first, they worked with MoveIt. So MoveIt is an Israeli company that has this app that helps you find how to get from point A a to B using public transportation, whether it's train and bus and where does it come, it helps you navigate all that and now it is expanded to Dayton and available for you to download. And this is how MoveIt became Commuter Ed's first international client. So they started small and now they became their client in 10 different markets. Mm -hmm. So other example is Wish, Wush, and I think we sort of covered that in the past. So Wush brings this clean, healthy, affordable water on the go. So it's this station, you bring your own bottle, it cleans the, the bottle, you flip it, and it, uh, it pours fresh water at a fraction of the cost of mineral water. So that's good for the environment, that's good for the people, and stations are located at Sinclair Community College, Montgomery County, here at the City Hall, and at Dayton Street uh, Children's Hospital. And they're now working with numerous Dayton region entities, and you can see the whole list, including Sinclair Interms and the Sustainability Club. Now what would be a big win, which, so they started their product in the US here in Dayton, which is the first. And now they're growing nationally, so they already have 25 stations in Miami Beach, which we hope are still there. there. And they have so many other things going on in the US, so there's no way they will be continuing shipping these huge stations from Israel to here. So they would need to manufacture, and that would have to be here in Dayton, in the region, and we are working this angle. That's awesome. Great, right. mm -hmm. And we're also doing many events for the benefit of Dayton region. So 
uh, company. So just lately, we had the Federation of Israeli Chamber of Commerce. Both the president and the CEO came here to Dayton um, and, ex and explained and helped Dayton companies to export their business to Israel. You see, we had many one-on-one -on -one meetings, and I don't know if you can see that uh, over there where they met with Obi that has this auto a robotic fitting device, and they're helping them. And they even signed an MOU with Dayton Area Chamber of Commerce here in the city. Just yesterday, we had folks from the Israeli Ministry of Defense coming from New York, sp especially to Dayton, to give a presentation and explain to Dayton companies how can they tap into this $1 billion, which is available each year, for the Israeli Defense Force to procure in the U.S. Now, they have to use U.S. vendors. For what, so why not Dayton companies, right? Because the Israeli Ministry of Defense, they're looking for small, medium companies focused on manufacturing companies. So we had 80 attendees, <coughs> dozens of meetings, and uh, dozens of companies that showed up. And we're looking for results to be happening in the next 6 or 12 months. So I'll keep you posted on that. So in Israel, I basically promote collaboration. We sort of cover that. I do a lot of work to strengthen the relationship between government, public, and private entities. So if a company like Commuter Ads, which is a small start startup, wants to meet with the Israeli Ministry of Transport, I can make that happen for them. And then I raise awareness of the unique opportunities in the Dayton region. Because a lot of Israeli companies, they want to do business in the US, and they want to expand here. But they, they know New York, and they know California. But they haven't heard about Dayton and the amazing opportunities here. So this is what I do. And I attract them to, the day, to Dayton. And of course, assist Dayton region companies with the business in Israel. And we do a lot of work in that. So I thank you so much for your time. And Please, companies, contact us. We will be happy to do more. Adas, appreciate you coming. I always mm -hmm. like to get the update. And it seems like each year it's <coughs> more and more and more and really truly building uh, on, your, on your work and um, your ferocious energy on this effort. And I know we really appreciate, appreciate it. And we're really glad you're championing Dayton and Israel. Thank uh, you. Commissioners, I don't know if you have any further thom comments or questions. Yeah, I uh, had an opportunity to participate in the event yesterday. Oh, wow, wonderful. Uh, yeah, with Thank you for that. Very uh, well attended, a very diverse group of businesses here from Dayton. And I just uh, was very appreciative of how they broke down different opportunities to do business with, number one, the Department of Defense in Israel, but also the Israeli government in general. We've got a lot of companies here that uh, can really play in that space, and they, they showed up and, and uh, were very involved in it. So thank very you. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nice job. Yeah. Nice yeah. job. Just want to say, um, I see you put it up on the screen here, but make sure we also give some credit to the collaboration with uh, Ford Weber from the city and okay. also from Pamela Fannin from Montgomery County. So Absolutely. Mm -hmm. appreciate and that. Steve and Shelley and the dead Well, it's a true alliance. So thank you so much for the support. Commissioner yeah. Steve uh, Nutt and uh, Pam Fannin actually came to the U.S. Conference of Mayors International Committee and presented on our DRITA, uh work. And so we use it as a national best practice at the Conference of Mayors as well. Mm -hmm. So right. appreciate their great leadership coming to that. Right. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, last but certainly not least, I'd like to invite Mr. Tom Maltzby, President and CEO of the United Way of Great Greater Dayton to speak about their upcoming campaign. <coughs> also, I'd like to mention for the Welcome Dayton folks, if you'd wait till the end of the meeting, we'd love to get a picture of you all with us uh, for our certification. Thank good you, good Mayor. Morning. And um, good morning. And members of the commission and the uh, city of Dayton uh, staff, I'll call you team today <laughs> because you are a part of the uh, United Way effort to uh, have a major impact on how we improve the quality of life in the uh, city of Dayton and across the region. We are Montgomery Green and Preble, um, and Dayton is very incremental to that process. Um, Mayor Whaley, I want to start off by thanking you for becoming a leadership giver with United Way this year. That is awesome. Uh, I am hoping that your colleagues on the City Commission join you in that effort. And I say that uh, because it is extremely important for you to know that the needs that we are addressing in the city of Dayton and beyond are far greater than the resources there are to invest in them. And all of you know that, I know for sure. But the socioeconomic needs in our community are not getting better. There are a lot of things that are getting better, but some of these things are not. 
and we just need more support. For example, the minimum amount of, I should say, the, we, we, wanted to, we needed to invest $500,000 more in our collective impact grants last year just to minimally meet the, the request and the needs um, in our priority areas for funding. We fell $500,000 short of doing that. We don't, I mean, we have that in our community. We just need to understand more about why that's important. Our collective impact grants process focuses on solving human services problems. There are not many organizations in or out of the United Way world that is focusing on literally solving human services problems. It requires having evidence-based research, which we do. It re requires doing analytics, uh, which we're about to do, um, uh, with compliments of the tech community that's going to join our Human Services Technology Council, to really understand the data behind the issues, and then understand how to invest to prevent the things that are happening in our community, which <coughs> we have funded for over 100 years, but we're still funding them. So some of these things we will fund in perpetuity. There's no question about it. Right. You know, some of the safety net uh, services, you know, we can't solve those. We can mitigate and help, but there are problems in our communities that we can solve. You know, we do not have to have hunger in one of the most philanthropic um, and, and wealthiest communities on the planet. We should not have young kids going to school hungry. You know, we, we should not have young kids not graduating. We should not have African American males at the very bottom of the scale in an educational system that spends more per pupil than, than almost anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, these are things we mm -hmm. can fix. But the fixes aren't pretty, they don't tug at your heartstrings, but they do require an investment of us to be able to say, hey Dayton, we're good at a whole lot of things. Congratulations, All American City you know, welcoming city, you know, connections with the world, but we need to be a little bit better at home. You know, we need to understand that it doesn't take a whole lot from anybody, but it takes a lot of people giving a little. Congratulations to you on your campaign. It's off to an awesome start. Uh, I also wanted to take the opportunity to, to, to thank uh, Robin Williams, uh, who is the, uh, your campaign chair uh, this year, who did a phenomenal job and working on your kickoff, uh, Chief Bill and Joe Par Parletta. You know, I know you guys, it was kind of cool that day, but, but thank you for stepping up and, and you know, getting dunked and, get, and getting back up and doing it again, you know, to provide the inspiration. But what really makes a difference in a United Way campaign, in a United Way community, is leaders leading by example and then sharing their examples and their stories with others. You know, the lowest hanging fruit in our world today is participation. So we don't need a whole lot of people giving a whole lot more. We just need a whole lot more people giving. And that we can accomplish, and I know we can, you know, with one of our highest level partners in the city of Dayton. You have always been a strong supporter of United Way. You have always stepped up. We partner on so many levels in many of our communities, east, west, north, and south. And we are proud of the work that we're doing. And we do know that we're making a difference. And we do know that lives are being improved as a result of the investments that you make and the investments that we make across the board. But we have to do more. You know, I was just listening to the young lady from Israel who says Israel does more than le with less. I didn't know we had something in common with Israel, but we also do more with less. And we do a whole <coughs> lot because the collaborative impact approach that we've taken to mitigating, solving, and hopefully preventing problems means that we have to bring a broad community together. So United Way no longer just funds an organization or an agency. We fund collaboratives because we know in our community there is no one primary solution to the major problems that plague our most uh, you know, devastated or severe neighborhoods. We have to bring a collective to this. So we know if a child is not performing in school, we know if a child is not being fed, if a child is not sleeping in a bed, if a child is not being encouraged and motivated, you know, in their environment, we know how that's going to be presented to a teacher. We can fix these kind of things. We can go into the communities. We have neighborhood collaboratives with you, Westwood. We have them on the East End. We have them. But we really do need to make a much 
greater investment. When we compare the United Way of the Greater Dayton area to our counterparts throughout the country, we don't even do half of what they do. I mean, they, they really outdo us. We do phenomenal work. We are one of the most innovative United Ways in the country when it comes to help link. Uh, we connect people to services better than anyone. You know, but, but we just don't have the ability to be the shining star that we used to be and that we can be for one simple reason. We just need more support. So thank you for what you do. I encourage you to share this with other leaders and, and among uh, the city. The city, thank you all for those of you within the city of Dayton who are giving and who are giving a lot, who understand our needs and who understand what we need to do. Um, but we really, really need your help uh, this year. You know, this year, we consider this year uh, to be a turning point. You know, everybody's making turns this year. Philanthropy is a lot different than it used to be when I came here five years ago uh, to, to lead United Way. But our community is wealthy. There is all kind of wealth in our community. And again, it doesn't take a few people giving a lot. It takes a lot of people just giving a little, and we will be represented among the great things, not United Way, but the communities who are disenfranchised, the children who are struggling, the senior citizens who need to get connected, the growth of millennials in our community who want to be part of the solution. We will be among the cities who are recognized as a United Way community that's having impact and making a difference. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Tom, thank you for your great <coughs> leadership and your passion mm -hmm. around United Way. It's felt, and certainly when we met, I felt it as well, and I'm proud to be a, a leadership member. Commissioners, that's donating $1,000 through the year is what it, what it means, and I am honored to do that, uh, particularly because of the transition United Way has made to really work on this collective impact model. We know from City of Learners and Learn to Earn, yes and other areas that when we bring the community together around the issue, even the opioid epidemic, using all pieces of our community, that's when we're really able to make impact and United Way is one of the great leaders doing that work and appreciate Tom and his whole team um, really understanding that as we try to bring people together about around this work for our challenges for our community. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Tom. Thank you all very much. Have a great day. <coughs> All right, I know it was a little long of presentations, but I thought they were all very uh, uh, thoughtful and important mm -hmm. to our city. So thank you, commissioners. Next, Ms. Lavender, are there any additions, deletions, or comments <coughs> to the calendar? I have none, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Bickstein, additions, deletions, or comments? I have no additions or deletions, Mayor. I do have um, a few of the comments on, on a few of the calendar items. Uh, unfortunately, item number four, is a, an item of a payment of voucher that uh, resulted from a uh, lack of oversight with the staff uh, and some contracting issues. Uh, the staff involved in that oversight have been disciplined uh, and I have reviewed the uh, oversight mechanisms and reinforced the importance of, of making sure that the, the staff and at various levels are, are looking at that. Thank you. Uh, on a happier note, uh, uh, items five and six are more uh, great investment as we continue to be a responsible, uh, efficient, and effective steward of the regional water supply. Uh, certainly, here's another $1.3 million or so of uh, upgrades, uh, again, from our asset capital um, plan that uh, we are reinvesting in to continue to um, replace that 1% of our system uh, every year. So uh, happy to bring that forward and that are all, that's all my comments. Thank you, Ms. Dickstein. Ms. La Ms. Lavender, are there any citizens registered to speak on calendar items? None on the calendar items, Your Honor. Commissioner, are there any comments on uh, the calendar items? Uh, right here. None. <coughs> all right, seeing none, it's a pretty light calendar. May I, I'd appreciate the comment, uh, Ms. Dickstein, on payment of voucher and the uh, um, process in place to make sure that discipline is in place whenever that happens. May I have a motion to approve city manager's recommendation? 
Your Honor, I move to approve city manager's recommendations. Second the motion, Your Honor. Motion probably moved and seconded to approve calendar items. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Legislation? Ms. Lavender. First reading ordinance number 31587-17, authorizing the grant of an electric easement to the Dayton Power and Light Company. And that's all, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Ms. Lavender. Um, we have some board appointments, and I will uh, open and entertain some appointments this morning. Your Honor, I move to reappoint John Lumpkin and David Williamson to the Greater Dayton Regional Transit Authority for a term ending September 25th, 2020. And I second the motion, Your Honor. Yes, we probably move to second it to reappoint Mr. John Lumpkin and Dave Williamson to the Greater Dayton Regional Transit Authority Board for a term ending September 25th, 2020. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ms. Lavender, are there any citizens registered to speak? Your Honor, we have one citizen that is registered to speak, and at this time I would like to state there is a three-minute time limit. As you address the commission, we ask that you state your name and address for the record, and at that time I will turn on the green light. When the green light comes on, you will have the three minutes to speak. After you have spoken two and a half minutes, a yellow light will come on, then you will have 30 seconds remaining to speak. When the red light comes on, you'll be asked to cease your comments and to take your seat. And to the audience in attendance, I ask everyone to be respectful by refraining from any utterance, gesture, display, or conversation that will prevent the city commission from hearing the speaker's comments. I call forward Willie Feaster. My name is Willie Feaster, 112 East Lincoln Street. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, I'm here today to talk uh, on behalf of my uh, dear, 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 dear friend, Miss Major Wendy Stivers of the Dayton Police Department. She just recently had a, a loved one pass away. Her father just passed away. And, uh, uh, and I'm asking uh, each and every one could they please, please call her and offer condolence or support to her? You know, you, you can't call her, you can send her email. You know, she's still coming to work and don't even show it. She's still trying to do her job and everybody know how hard the grief we suffer when we lose a loved one. It's not easy. You know, I, I think it's about my parents when they pass, man. You know, it, 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 it hurts. but. You know, she is a police officer and she deal with all she have dealt with, but it's different when we actually deal with it ourselves when it impacts us. So, you know, she didn't want me to do this. She asked me not to do this. She begged, please don't do this for me. I said, you know, I love you, woman. You know, I, I would do anything for her. You know, I, I, you know I, and I'm serious about that. But I'm asking each and everyone who knows her, please, it only take them but a second. Just to give her some type of support because she does need this here. You know, like I said, she, she's still coming to work. She's trying to arrange a funeral at work. She's dealing with family. She's dealing with trying to get her father's stuff together. So that's not hard. That's hard to do. It's not easy. And you're still trying to do your job every day, what you're getting paid to do. So I know y'all have a lot of things on y'all agenda. Please don't forget that lady because she still is a human being, you know, and she hurts just like anybody else hurts, you know, and you know, so please, it might not be today, it might be tomorrow, please remember her, because she needs support and encouragement and motivation to go through this. And last, I'd like to say, um, did you represent Dayton yesterday good? Because anytime you step on the spotlight, you know you represent Dayton. Even though, you know, you're trying to get the governor, you still are the mayor of Dayton. So when you step out there, you know, you still representing Dayton. So be make Dayton look good wherever you go. And thank y'all. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Speaker. Thank you for that update. That's all, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Dickstein, do you have any closing comments? I have only one closing comment. Um, uh, for the, the, the city organization and the community, we are collecting donations for Hurricane Harvey. Uh, water, diapers, toiletries uh, through the end of this week. And uh, so uh, you can go to our website to see the places where you can drop those off. 
and uh, we just encourage uh, the organization and the community to continue to support others as they are going through difficult times. Thank you, Ms. Goodstein. Ms. Lavender, any closing comments? I have none, Your Honor. Commissioner's closing comments. I just have one uh, short one. Just want to uh, offer congratulations again to Ms. Uh, Marion S. Fisher, who celebrated her 100th birthday party this uh, past weekend. And I had the honor of uh, representing the uh, mayor and the commission uh, with a very nice and long proclamation. Um, it was she, a long she, she was a former teacher as well, uh, originally from Chicago, but uh, resided here in Dayton for the majority of her life, but has done just great things in this community. So it was a real honor to be there. Yeah, it's a, um, <clears throat> glad you were able to attend that one. Um, a lot of the things went on this weekend. I'm not going to attempt to go into all the great things in the community this past weekend from the um, health fair at West Town to Western Hills Neighborhood Association uh, picnic mm -hmm. to the Mary Scott Nursing Home uh, Community Day. But I do want to highlight and thank um, Ms. Laura Estandia from uh, Bike Miami Valley. Um, she invited me to come out with her and um, some of her team and some board members and and bike around uh, the city you this go. past Saturday. Yeah, it was a good All time. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but more than just a good time, it was very educational. I learned an awful lot right. about some of the challenges um, that far as we've come in terms of being a biking community, uh, we still have an awful lot of challenges here to continue to improve that. Um, and, and some things that are probably from the state legislature we need to um, take a look at. Um, but just locally, one thing that g made me really aware of that we as drivers, <coughs> We really should be very careful. Um, as I was out riding that bike, I was thinking about how at times I might be um, distracted and not pay attention to bikers. So we have a lot of bikers in our community. And I just want to encourage people that while you're out driving, think about the bikers. I mean, they, they are there and it's only going to increase and you should probably join the team because it is a lot of fun, great exercise, and a very convenient way to get around the city. So I just want to thank her for bringing me out. I didn't expect to get that type of an education. I thought I was just out to get a little bit of a bike ride and so get ahead. some sunshine, but it was <laughs> very educational. I was Wish fascinated. This that made my morning. That's yeah. So yeah. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And then, and then, too, I actually have a question for the city manager. And a, a key initiative that we, we've all been championing, championing <coughs> is um, our Accelerate Dayton initiative. And I know we went through a number of um, neighborhood association meetings and places around the community to try to um, <coughs> make sure we promote that. And, I know initially we didn't get as many folks to come <coughs> to those meetings as we wanted. I just wanted to ask um, the city manager if she could update us on what are the efforts to make sure that everybody knows about this opportunity around Accelerate Dayton. Sure, Commissioner. We are still uh, actively promoting and pushing information out both digitally and uh, in person, trying to make sure that people are aware of this exciting pilot opportunity, uh, trying to drive investment into our neighborhoods. I'm going to ask Ford Weber, our Director of Economic Development, to come up and give you a status update on where we're at and just remind people of all the critical uh, dates uh, with regards to this uh, promotional opportunity. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. good, good morning, Mayor, Commissioners, Ms. Dickstein, Ms. Lavender. Yes, it's my pleasure today to give you an update on Accelerate Dayton. In fact, applications for Accelerate Dayton are due exactly two months from, the, from today on November 13th. And just to refresh everybody's recollection, this is a program by which the city is reaching out into neighborhoods to contact neighborhood entrepreneurs and further their business ideas and their businesses by providing up to $10,000 of business technical consulting services for each of these uh, entrepreneurs. So this is a program where they do not receive direct cash, but they do get much needed entrepreneurial development assistance from consultants who can help these entrepreneurs augment their entrepreneurial skills with the business savvy that the consultants can bring to the table. We've been very aggressively reaching out to the community. The week of August 21st when we had our kickoff, we had community meetings in four community-based lo locations at each of the four quadrants of the city. Those were at the East End Community Center, the Croc Center, Central State West Campus and Fairview United Methodist Church. We've been continuing to work very hard on this. The week of August 28th, we had informational sessions in branch libraries throughout Dayton. And we also presented uh, last week at the Belmont Library. Also on August 23rd, we presented at the co-working event 
at the main library. So we're really pushing it out into the entrepreneurial community. We're also reaching out into the broader community through segments such as Living Dayton, um, new segments on channel 7, 22, and 45, social media. We've been working very closely with the, the departments of planning and community de development and public affairs to make sure we're getting at this message out into the community. And we've begun uh, reaching out to our neighborhood-based organizations, the, the neighborhood presidents, et cetera. So we feel that uh, we're working very hard and having a great deal of success reaching out in, into the community, but we will be continuing to do that between now and the application deadline of November 13th. One of the uh, ways that we're reaching out is we've had about 300 of these cards printed up. They are available at local libraries, local community centers, and on the front, um, it tells a little bit about the program, and then on the back, it gives dates for upcoming events. So we have a, a, events scheduled from Saturday, September 16th, all the way out to Tuesday, October 24th. There's about seven or eight events here that are scheduled. We have more copies of these. Veronica Morris, who's been working very hard on this program, has more of these available here this morning to hand out to you after the meeting, as well as more copies of the application form itself. One of our goals is to make this as easy, as simple an application process as possible. We know that a lot of our residents may feel a little bit intimidated working with City Hall. Our job is to eliminate uh, that as an impediment to them. And we're pleased to answer any additional questions that you may have. Yeah, you know, I, I appreciate that update and um, mm -hmm. have some, some discussions. <coughs> with the city manager about this a couple of times. And one thing I would just like to maybe throw out as a suggestion for consideration, and I don't know all the um, time availability or bandwidth in terms of um, staffing, but um, you know, one thing that would be nice, I know we do a great job of getting around and we talk to a lot of our larger companies within the city. You know, we partner with Downtown Dayton Partnership and with others. I know the mayor does a lot of those uh, meetings, uh, but we meet with a lot of our medium to large size companies. Um, this might be an opportunity maybe to have some direct contact. Um, I know we're trying to go through different associations, but perhaps having, you know, in the banking industry, we call it a cold calling and mm -hmm. business, we call it cold calling, but maybe just to do some cold calls directly to some of the smaller businesses within the neighborhood and make sure that they are aware of this program. This is the pilot year. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure we have a great first year if possible. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure that we get this information to those who need it most and you know every, everybody might not watch our TV show right um, <laughs> and they might watch something else so just in case shame they don't get, yeah, shame on them <laughs> but just in case they find something more exciting to watch on television I just want to make sure that we meet them where they are yeah, I think that's a good idea thank you mm -hmm. okay commissioners any other comments or questions Mr. Weber appreciate nope. the update yeah, okay. thank you thank, thank you, you. <coughs> other comments I uh, just have one. I wanted to ask uh, Katie Crosby from Human Relations Council to, to step to the podium and Melissa Bertolo also, please. Uh, Melissa has done excellent, excellent work leading Welcome Dayton for these last few years. and She is going to be leaving us for a new and exciting opportunity. Uh, Ms. Crosby, do you want to say a little something? Sure. So uh, Friday is Melissa's last day, um, and I just wanted to make a few comments, give Commissioner Joseph an opportunity to make some comments. We all want to make comments. Oh, I don't and wanna, everybody to I an opportunity to, to make comments and give <laughs> Melissa an opportunity to make comments. But um, I wrote down a couple of things that does not encompass all of the work that Melissa has done over the fi last five years after um, Tom left as I, what I call the father of Welcome Dayton. But for the last five years, Melissa has owned Welcome Dayton. She has led with passion and commitment. Um, her work has been recognized both nationally and internationally. She's changed local pu public policy and influenced policy statewide, brought to the forefront areas where community could and should be more empathetic and intentional, and including immigrants in all aspects of the community. Through Voices of the Immigrant Experience, um, Melissa has provided an opportunity for new Americans to share their stories of overcoming significant barriers in the, um, as they move into this country and start new lives. While many community leaders focused on the economic benefit, Melissa's thoughtfulness and brave leadership also ensured that Dayton focused on social and cultural barriers that are a result of discrimination. She's considerate of the need of immigrants to feel safe. She partnered with DPS and Sinclair to create Welcome Belmont to allow immigrants and immigrant students an opportunity to um, 
to develop relationships with their peers and learn from one another. She worked with DPS or DPD, Dayton Police Department, to create education and outreach opportunities to dispel myth and fe myths and fears and work with the civil rights team of the Human Relations Council to educate the immigrant community on their rights and ensure protection under the city's anti-discrimination ordinances. Melissa was and is never afraid to challenge the process. Um, she understands her voice is important to giving voice to those who are voiceless and often unable to speak. I've only highlighted a few of her accomplishments that have been institutionalized within the city of Dayton and the work that she has done throughout the community. I am gonna miss Melissa dearly. The staff is gonna miss Melissa dearly and I'm sure you all will. So I wanna give you all an opportunity to comment and then Melissa an opportunity. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. Alfie, <laughs> Melissa, do you wanna say something? You're welcome to, go ahead. Um, oh gosh. Um, um, it's quite a surprise, actually. So thank you um, for coming um, or for calling me up here and recognizing uh, the work that has been accomplished over the last five years. It's today. I feel like is definitely a culmination for us to have received the certification of being a, a certified welcoming city, and that's certainly something that doesn't come easy. And it's also really uh, something that's not just my work; it's really the community's work, and I know that all of you have acknowledged that this morning as well. That welcome Dayton to be successful, we really have to have the community engagement, and it's just been such an honor. I've been chosen the, uh, to be the one to lead this effort, and um, as I transition to my new position with Welcoming America, I am staying in the Dayton, Yay. in the city of Dayton, and um, look forward to continuing to be involved. So, thank you very much. Yeah, Mr. Uh, I'm glad to, to start. And uh, I said something before. I, I talked about uh, your key contributions, but I, I just want to thank you. you. You know how hard it's been. Uh, and just as an example, Katie talked about a number of the programs that Melissa has worked on or put into place or uh, brought into being from nothing. Uh, and just as we looked through all of her responsibilities and looking to hire someone new, there are 30 some programs that she's running just today, 30 some, and that's a, that's a heavy burden for anyone. That's a, uh, uh, and, and she's managed to pull it off with grace and with passion. Um, and I, I really, I, I'm not sure how we're gonna go on. I know things, we always go on, every organization finds somebody, mm -hmm. but uh, it has been a real pleasure working with you. Uh, the, the citizens and all residents of Dayton have benefited from your hard work and your passion. So thank you, Melissa, and good luck. Thank you. Um, I was just say this is this is another example um, of we talk about programs that kind of start as ideas and just blossom. And I'm, I'm Katie. I'm glad you mentioned Tom Walrat. Uh, yeah, he was certainly there at the beginning. Tom, welcome. Um, but you know, Tom may have gotten things started, but you know, Melissa really <coughs> took this to a whole nother level. Yeah. And just really, when you talk about having a spark and turning into a fire, Melissa, you did a wonderful job, and just you should be commended. And we're so proud of you. And we're glad you're getting an opportunity to do some new things, but we're also glad that you're gonna stick around the Dayton area. Mm -hmm. And you know us well enough to know that, you know, we may tap you on the shoulder and ask you to help <laughs> on some things here and there. So just thank you very much. Yeah, I, I was definitely gonna say uh, echo um, all those sentiments and well, as well, and make sure that you leave your phone number. Because of course- uh, <laughs> Oh, I have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we'll be calling. Um, and uh, you will fall into the, the Dean's personship as, as Tom has to uh, make sure that we, uh, again, can tap on your knowledge uh, from time to time. Again, thank you. Yeah, just wanted to say thank you and congratulations and good luck to you and your future endeavors and uh, look forward to working with you in the future and thanks for staying in Dayton. <laughs> Melissa, I made some comments about you last week and certainly appreciate all your great work. I think the thing that is uh, most amazing is when Melissa started in 2012, um, being an immigrant-friendly community was not as divisive, frankly, as it is now. And I think what's been so impressive with Melissa's leadership is she's been able to really guide me as mayor and this commission through those times to make sure that we stand and hold true to our values and do not walk away from something that we think is incredibly valued to our community. And, and I think our confidence in you made that happen. And so we're really excited for your next, room, um, next move. And we're glad you're going to stay in the city of Dayton, not just the Dayton area, but I'd like to say the city of Dayton. <laughs> and um, I think next week, Ms. Lavender will be appointing uh, Ms. Bertolo to the Welcome Dayton Committee. So we'll make sure that that happens as well. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Any other further comments? 
Uh, I just wanted to make one more comment. Last week, we've gotten a lot of feedback, and uh, I've gotten a lot of emails and Facebook posts and Twitter posts about uh, this exciting announcement that Amazon uh, is looking to put its second headquarters in a real place uh, uh, with 50,000 new jobs. Uh, we've been working diligently, I think, about every single day, having conversations uh, across the region, across the city. Ms. Dickstein's uh, obviously leading this effort from our perspective, commissioners. Uh, but we're talking to folks uh, across the region and in a broad sense about the region, too. So having some really good conversations. We recognize that uh, bringing 50,000 jobs to our, uh, not our region would be incredibly valuable to uh, the citizens of Dayton and uh, the entire Dayton region. And we look to be leaders in that effort to bring people together, to make sure that we pay attention, that this is an incredible opportunity for growth for all of us. And um, I know that Ms. Dixie and I will be uh, working very hard on this effort and wanted to just give an update to the citizens of Dayton, the commissioners, as we are aggressively um, uh, 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 pushing for that. Uh, the other thing I'd like to point out is uh, Amazon's uh, uh, focus is around inclusiveness. And uh, as you can see from the theme of this uh, meeting, that's something that is our core value, something I say every single day. And so I think we have a lot to offer here uh, in the center of the country uh, for the Amazon headquarters, and we will be competing vigorously. With no further business to come before the Dayton City Commission, this meeting is adjourned.